Hello, my name is Jamali Miku, and I am the business office manager at Aristocare at Norwood Terrace Rehabilitation and Nursing Home. Today I will be speaking about the differences between Medicare and Medicaid. Medicare and Medicaid are governmental health insurance programs. Medicare is, fe is a federal program for people who are 65 or older, under 65 for certain disabilities, or of any age and have end-stage renal disease, or ALS. You can get your Medicare coverage through Original Medicare or Medicare Advantage Plan. Original Medicare is straight Medicare, in which some know it as the blue, red, and white card. And Medicare Advantage Plan is when your coverage is under or through an insurance, uh, commercial insurance, such as United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and etc. Enrollment for Medicare would be three months before his 65th birthday, if applicable to age. Medicaid is joint federal and state program for certain people. Families, children, pregnant women, the elderly, and people with disabilities that have limited income and resources. Enrollment for Medicaid can be at any time. As far as what they cover, Medicare coverage depends on what the member chooses. And for Medicaid, the state creates their own programs that follow federal guidelines in which there are mandatory and optional benefits. To provide a few benefits in the mandatory benefits for Medicaid, they are care and services in a hospital or skilled nursing facility, care and services received in a federally qualified health center or health clinic, or freestanding licensed or recognized by your state birth center, doctor, nurse, midwife, and certified pediatric and family nurse practitioner services, and more. As for Medicare, the coverages are by parts that are chosen by the member in which the available parts are from A to D. Now, a brief description of coverage for each part are as follows. Part A covers care and services received as an inpatient, in which means being admitted to a hospital or skilled nursing facility, such as a rehabilitation location like Aristocare. Part B covers doctor visits, care and service received as an outpatient, which means any service that you are not admitted for, like x-rays, ultrasounds, or in a nursing home setting, some therapy services can be provided under these benefits, and some preventative care. Part C, in a Medicare Advantage plan, this coverage would combine parts A, B, and D under one plan instead of individual parts. Part D is the coverage for prescription drugs, meaning your coverage that would cover your medications. I would like to briefly explain how and when the Medicare and Medicaid benefits are utilized at a long care, long care facility. When a resident comes in from a hospital or other, another long-term care facility and is being skilled for nursing or therapy, the coverage that will be built is the Medicare Part A. If the resident decides to become long-term, then the coverage that would cover the custodial services would be Medicaid. Therefore, if the resident does not have Medicaid as a secondary, but has a commercial secondary insurance, once transitioned into the long-term care, then the commercial insurance would not cover custodial care. That is why residents apply for Medicaid once determined that he or she will be long-term care at the facility. I know the one question that you may be thinking at this time is how much does it cost? Before I provide that information, I would like to first explain what premiums, deductibles, co-pays, and co-insurances are. That can be a little complicated to some people Understanding and the words are always being thrown around for medical insurances or bills. Well, I'm going to explain, explain briefly. A premium is the amount that a member or recipient would have to pay monthly to an insurance coverage 
for an insurance coverage. For Medicare, there can be no premium for Part A, but for Part A to be free, the individual must be entitled to receive the Medicare based on their own earnings or those of a spouse, parent, or child. A deductible is an amount that has to be paid by the member or recipient before the insurance plan pays. For example, if you have a $1,500 deductible according to your plan, once you have paid the $1,500 yourself, then the only thing applicable would be a copay or coinsurance, depending on your benefits. A copay is a fixed amount you pay for health services after you have paid your deductible. For example, if your plan indicates that you have a $20 copay for a primary care doctor's visit, then you would have to pay that every time you visit your primary physician. Now, certain plans have certain exemptions to the co-pays, and that depends on your benefits. And a coinsurance. Now, a coinsurance is the percentage of cost of a covered health insurance, care services you may have after you've paid your deductible. So basically, it is the percentage that the member is responsible for that is not covered by the insurance company. Now, for what the cost is for coverage through Medicare and Medicaid, as for Medicare, it will depend on the coverage that is chosen in which the costs may include premiums, deductibles, co-pays, and coinsurances. For Medicaid, it depends on the recipient's income and the rules in the applicant's state that the cost may include premiums, co-pays, coinsurances, and deductibles. But certain groups are exempt from most out of pocket. As for Medicare, it covers the 80% leaving that 20% coinsurance, which is patient responsibility. Therefore, members will obtain a secondary insurance, such as a supplemental, so it can cover the 20% and or the co-pays. And did you know that people can qualify for both Medicare and Medicaid? When they are eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, they are called dual eligibles, in which most of the healthcare coverage is covered. I would, like now, I would now like to close out my presentation with letting you know the ways to move forward with attempting to obtain eligibility. For Medicare, most people are enrolled in Parts A and B automatically when they turn 65. But if not, you can contact your local Social Security office to see if you are eligible. As for Medicaid eligibility, depends on the rules in your state. But you can call your state medical assistance office to see if you are eligible. If you are inter interested in applying, for the New Jersey Medicaid, you can complete an application on www.njfamilycare.org. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and it was helpful and informative. Have a wonderful day.